This is Tutbury Castle. We're in the absolute heart of England in Staffordshire. It's such a beautiful place. No wonder so many people want to come here and the surrounding areas as well. There's some secret and glorious places to find. This castle certainly had a glorious past. As you can see, I'm Mary Queen of Scots and I'm back. I was a prisoner here four times. But also I'm Leslie Smith, the curator of the castle with a passion for this area and the surrounding district. So worth a visit. Let me tell you why this castle is so extraordinary. We've had a dig recently with the British Museum and a research study and it lasted for eight years. Eight years of study and five of digging. And the findings were absolutely remarkable. This castle was much bigger than even I, in my enthusiastic state, could have hoped for. The castle in the 1360s had over a thousand people living here. Imagine one of those little tight Cornish villages, houses so close together you could shake hands through the top windows, little cobbled streets, dogs barking, bread baking, all destroyed by Cromwell, of course, pulled down by Act of Parliament. But there's enough left for you to come and find out more and enjoy. We do know from the dig as well that man has been here on this site 8,000 BC, which means that in the Mesolithic period, the Stone Age, men lived here. We found the flints. No wonder, it's a high green table. And down below the beautiful and picturesque Dove Valley, a place where woods would have been and still dotted around there are plenty of trees and glorious views. In the woods could be found many things to eat and the river was obviously essential for life as well. And in the first car park, we found an amazing kiln. And when chipped away at the edges and tested, it was for pottery. So the Romans were definitely here, as indeed they were in Roaster and Eutoxeter. Listen to those names, Roaster and Eutoxeter. We also know that William the Conqueror gave order to build this castle within a couple of years of being in England. It was busy, you know, because he realized this was a very important spot. You may have noticed I've missed the Saxons. Well, we can't prove they were here, but we think it's very likely. Not least of all, because the Vikings raided the next hill stop of Hanbury. And we think this green table was irresistible for warlords. It always has been. The first castle built by the Normans was wood, as you might expect, with stone buildings going up very quickly inside. Because, of course, wood is easy to gather and quick to put up. However, it's subject to rain. It's subject to soaking and rotting and fire. So the sooner the stone, the better, said the Normans. The Black Prince was here. Margaret of Anjou, wife of Henry VI, and she was quite a girl, you know, quite a tigress. She made this her main place to live, her principal residence, spent a fortune on it. And you can still see in some of the ruins the merest ghost of fireplaces beautifully decorated from a wealthy purse. We have had some of the greatest names in English history here, including a mercenary from Wales. He was called Rhys Ap Griffiths and he came here to stand for the king. We've got the biggest treasure find ever found in the UK here. Treasure in terms of coins, that is. For the number of coins previously had been less than 20,000. Not many, eh? But here at Tutbury, we know the war chests that were lost in the River Dove and the content of them found hundreds of years later in the 1830s was 262,000 solid silver coins. I bet that put us on the map too. The castle continued to do well and grow and in the medieval period we were the Woodstock of England. We had a massive festival here that attracted minstrels and musicians from all over the country and the king and queen themselves would come, if it was a king and queen at the time, for this incredible musical festival of Lammas, the feast of the Virgin Mary in August, meant that for two weeks, every year, from at least 1350, right up until 1647, it happened here. It was silenced by Cromwell. Of course, the castle stood firm for Cromwell. Did it? It tried its hardest. For three weeks, it stood firm because before then there'd been so many kings and queens. Not just me, Mary Queen of Scots in my tragic state, actually held for part of my time in the room I'm in now, but also my son, James I of England, James VI of Scotland. Charles I was here with Prince Rupert. And of course the whole area was ripped out its heart and the castle silenced. After that time, however, the castle was used in a surprising way. 
in the Napoleonic Wars, it was a tented prison for French prisoners. Just imagine, you can still occasionally see little bits of graffiti that look rather French in origin. The Georgians didn't care much about us, although it was owned by the Crown, the property, and still is. They seemed to want to stay in London and try gin and tonic, for gin had arrived. But the Victorians loved us most particularly, because they loved the beauty and wonders of a ruin, a real ruin. So romantic, you see. So writers came here, and painters came here, and very early forms of photography as well, trying to catch the ghosts of past. Oh, did I mention? It's haunted as well. Now the castle is finding itself in revival. For in the last 10 years, the castle has changed quite a lot, but in the nicest possible way. We haven't, of course, rebuilt it. You'll be glad to hear. It's a scheduled monument. We must never forget those that died for what they believed in. This castle, however, has opened up the Great Hall, put in gardens, and now we have weddings. It's delightful to see it catching its breath again. And not many years ago, we had our first christening here since the 1640s. I gathered the water myself from the River Dove, and it was just as if the castle went brrrr and the walls grew up again. It's a place now for birthday parties as well as weddings, and also for people just wanting to come together to see if we can catch a moment in history because we all love it. And this year, it's Jubilee year. We have been selected to be one of the diamonds in Her Majesty's necklace because on the Monday night, we're going to light a beacon. There'll be one, two, three, four flying across the nation and we'll form part of it. And people can come here and watch this and share it, a little bit of history. We're making more, you know. Tupbury Castle, she's peaceful and beautiful, sometimes a little wild, a place of love and passion and desire. And when you come here, I suspect, just like me, you'll be captivated. <laughs>